all right guys we are going to be reacting to something very interesting here uh china buried tons of dead plants under the desert sand and 10 years later it changed everything so we now know that they some they did something with the rabbit and something happened now they bury plants i get and something happened we're gonna react to this craziness guys make sure you guys subscribe to my channel let's jump in a phrase many have probably heard by now now, according to official data from 2016 to 2020, the country turned about 21.7 million acres of desertified land into green areas. That means on average, China transformed around 4.3 million acres per year. Of course, the Chinese didn't stop there. In 2022, they planted another 9.3 million acres of forest. And in 2023, China went even further. More than 9.8 million acres of degraded land got covered with trees. Sounds incredible because every year the Chinese plant an insane number of trees. They're fighting hard to stop the desert from spreading, but it's not that simple. Many experts say that the greening program isn't exactly effective, and if deserts keep expanding, China will have to plant trees for another 100 years or more. Wow. But China wouldn't be China if it didn't come up with a brilliant solution, and we're about to find out what that is. Some experts say that over time, 85% of all plants planted in barren soil just die. And we're not talking about just any experts here. These are scientists from Beijing Forestry University, so you can trust the info. Trees are great and all, but the thing is, sand can move. All those billions of tons of tiny particles spread across the desert aren't really held in place by anything. That's why the Chinese are planting a huge number of trees. Thanks to their roots, the sand stops moving and the desert keeps shrinking instead of spreading. However, a lot of plants just can't handle growing in shifting sands. The grains keep blowing away, leaving the roots exposed. And once the most vulnerable part of the plant is completely out in the open, it's only a matter of time before it dies. Just imagine how tough things get on the outskirts of the Taklamakan Desert, where planting is at least somewhat feasible. About 80% of the desert is shifting dunes, which according to UNESCO, move around 65 feet per year. In such conditions, no plant can survive. Its roots will either get exposed or the sapling will eventually end up buried under a thick layer of sand. Either way, that's not exactly great for its future growth. Plus, there's no wind protection in deserts, so it can reach pretty high speeds. That's exactly why the sand keeps moving. But besides shifting sand... Also, there's nothing stopping it, so they keep moving. Yeah, the so. wind itself is a problem for plants. Strong gusts can damage their parts, which isn't great for their growth either. Many plants that are planted in sandy areas still need at least some nutrients to grow, but sand dunes and arid plains often don't have much to offer, which is why the building blocks of China's green walls just wither and die. This planting takes place in China every year on March 12th. It's a very important date for the country, the tree planting day, when lots of ordinary people head out to drylands to put a new plant into the ground. On this day, everyone who steps outside knows that if they're between 11 and 60 years old, they have to plant three to five trees each year or do some equivalent work related to growing plants. And get this, tree planting in China is such a big deal that many couples get married the day before the holiday just so they can celebrate their wedding with a freshly planted tree. Yes, all of this is just wonderful. Populations actively participating in saving the country from desertification. So actively, in fact, that various estimates suggest around 50 billion trees have been planted in recent years. This practice works great in places where trees and shrubs can grow reasonably well. But when it comes to sand, that requires some specific knowledge. Where, how, and what to plant so that it doesn't end up dying. And it's also useful to know what can be done to increase the plant's survival rates. People in China who really know their stuff are using a legal cheat for planting in desert conditions. Straw. The idea is simply brilliant. But what exactly is meant by straw in this case? When wheat, oats, rice, and a few other similar crops ripen, they develop two parts. The ears, that's the stuff on top, and everything else, including the leaves and stems. The time has come to gather the harvest, the combines are driving onto the field, they separate the ears from the rest. The former go on to make well-known products, like bread if we're talking about wheat. The rest, meaning everything else, usually stays in the field and dries out. That's how straw is created, which is then used, for example, as animal feed. In short, it's the dead, dried up plants. The Chinese have a lot of this straw. Everyone knows that China is a rice country, right? So yep. as of 2024, there were more than 74 million acres of rice fields, 
which produced over 207 million tons of rice. There's no exact data on how much straw China gathered that year, but according to the International Rice Research Institute, the ratio is roughly 1 to 1. So we can say that in 2024, the country harvested over 200 million tons of straw just from rice. If we talk about the total amount of straw without focusing just on the country's main crop, China collects about 1 billion tons of this resource every year. As you might have guessed, the production leftovers aren't thrown away. Everything that wasn't used for animal feed and other purposes can definitely be put to some other use. For example, to fight deserts. Mm. In this case, the straw is placed on sand dunes, just on the sand or other. So these are small squares that they have. And based on this, I guess they're trying to, I don't know, there's some small plants in, in it. I guess they're trying to create something here. There are dry areas in these kinds of grids. On a large scale, it turns into kind of a huge checkerboard made up of hundreds or thousands of cells. Damn. Setting up this whole system is definitely not an easy task yep. and far from cheap as it might seem at first. First of all, you need to bring all this mass to the desert area. That's costly. Plus, sometimes getting to places with sand can be quite tricky. Secondly, such a system needs to be created properly. First you dig trenches, then you place straw in them. It may seem like it's not that hard. But once again, we remind you that this yeah. is often done in the desert, where there's no rain to cool things off. The temperatures are high, and finding shade to rest is like finding a needle in a haystack. But still, there are tons of Chinese workers who lay down straw because oh the downsides God. of setting up such a system fade when you see the final result. For example, these straw cells are a great way to get nutrients for plants. First, straw checkerboards are laid out on the dunes and other dry areas. Then seeds of plants that are resistant to the local conditions, like some shrubs or suitable trees, are placed into each cell. The wind lifts these seeds and spreads them to the inner edges of the straw barriers, which decompose and become a kind of natural fertilizer. Each straw cell will break down over three years, after which living grass checkerboard barriers will appear, turning the dunes green. Ooh. Even a bit of fertility for plants wow. in harsh desert conditions sounds wow. pretty good. Wow, that is actually kind of cool. But the scientists studying straw cells have discovered another useful effect. That was kind of cool. Each straw line increases the dunes' ability to trap dust, which leads to the accumulation of organic matter and nutrients on the dune surface. Scientists even pointed to the evidence. Wow. Where straw cells were used, they found noticeable differences in plant species diversity, grass cover, and the physical chemical properties of the soil. So the cells are not a magical solution that turns sand dunes into perfect green meadows, but they do a great job of giving plants a better chance of survival in tough conditions. On top of that, there's another positive effect. Straw cells act as a kind of barrier. It limits the movement of sand, which constantly tries to escape and expose the roots of trees and bushes or bury them. The saplings are safe in the straw surroundings because the sand they're planted in becomes more stable. As researchers have found out, thanks to the straw checkerboards, the intensity of the sand flow drops by 99.5%, wow. meaning it becomes almost completely still. And this, of course, seriously increases the survival rate of plants in the harsh desert dunes. Straw cells also serve as an extra layer of protection against the wind, which in the desert and other arid areas is completely unrestrained. It blows freely at high speeds and can easily damage young plants. Together, all the positive effects of straw cells significantly improve plant survival rate. We just need to figure out how to reduce the amount of work required to install a large number of these systems. And of course, the Chinese came up with something to handle this. In China, they figured, why go through the hassle of making little straw piles to form a checkerboard when you could just turn them into long lines and lay them down all at once? So straw ropes were made, first created That's somewhere smart. in a factory. Hey, I was about to say, man, you see these people just really pushing down and just really uh, putting too much physical, uh, physical, how can I say this? Oh my goodness. Uh... They put it too much physical. Oh man, I don't forgot uh, activity. <laughs> I was like, I would say physical activity. It would, it, it, man, this is, and, and it, it looks like it's going to take forever. So they have to figure out a better way to do this. They just need to be brought to the right place, then stretched out and laid down on the proper area. Mm -hmm. Done. No extra steps. All the key processes are mechanized and 60% more efficient than traditional manual laying. There we go. Also, the mechanically created straw lines last about six years, which is twice as long as their traditional counterparts. Plus, this pre-tied line can easily be reused. 
It's just as easy to take it out of the sand as it is to lay it in. Pull on one part, the rope moves as a whole, flawlessly. But for a country that's constantly fighting desertification by planting trees, one perfect solution was not enough. A transport vehicle was also developed that can carry straw and then simply drive across the chosen sandy area. The system automatically forms strips and lays them on the barren ground. And that's not all, because the solution also automatically digs a trench where the straw is laid. Remember how they had to cover the straw line with sand to control the shifting of sand dunes? Well, with the new vehicle, there's no need for any manual work. The machine drives and does everything on its own. The only thing left is to manually place the seedlings in the sand. Still, this doesn't change the fact that this method is four to six times more effective than laying straw cells by hand. To sum it up, it's a really helpful solution for a country that's actively fighting deserts. The Chinese also have something that's somewhere between hand digging and using a special machine. First, trenches are dug by hand with a tool like this. It's not exactly easy, but still it's better than using a shovel. After that, the straw has to be manually laid into the trench. Then a machine like this goes over the straw, pressing it down and burying it with sand. Of course, it's a far cry from the machine that does everything but on its something. own. But some yeah, but at least it's something. I mean, you have to atom uh, uh, automate this thing because it looks like it's a lot of work. Sometimes it's hard to get to the spot where you need to set up the straw protection by transport. At this point, one might ask, do straw grids really do their job effectively? Of course. And the Chinese have a great example. To see this, we'll need to go back to 1958 when the Baotu Lanzhou Railway opened. The reason for its construction is simple. They needed to connect Baotu in Inner Mongolia and Lanzhou in Gansu province, so it was necessary to lay 615 miles of railway, 87 miles of which passed through the Tengger Desert. Many foreign experts at the time insisted building a railway through the desert is impossible. Bad you idea. can see they built it. It became the first Chinese railway passing through the desert. But there were a lot of but but at the same time, but you see the plans problems. Underneath. To understand what the Tengger Desert is like, let's take a look at the city of Zhongwei, which is almost on its border. The people living there at times suffered from sandstorms so strong that they would sometimes blow people away, cover rice bowls with a layer of sand and many people would come home completely covered in sand. Wow. In short, Tengger is a generator of tiny sand grains flying with the wind, traveling hundreds of miles from the desert. In such conditions, it was difficult to lay the railway, and then just as difficult to operate it. Abroad, they even said that in 30 years, the railway would be completely buried in sand. So the builders actively tried to find ways to fight the desert. At the early stages, various methods were tested, including spreading gravel, asphalt, or straw mats over the sand, but all of this was wiped out by the strongest winds. But at one point, a worker who was involved in the construction accidentally stuck a bundle of straw into the sand with a shovel during the storm. When the storm calmed down, all the grassy plants were covered by the sand, but the bundle of straw stayed in place. At this moment, the builders realized they had found the most effective way to stabilize the sand. Yes, you could say it was a prototype of a straw cell. Since then, they've been used to protect the Baotu Lanzhou Railway, which runs through the restless desert. And as you wow. can see, the predictions that the railway would be buried under sand in 30 years didn't come true. It's fully operational now, and nearby you can spot those same straw checkerboards that were first laid out back in the mid-20th century, which we've already talked about today. It's worth mentioning that by that time, the wow. Chinese didn't stop at just using straw to stabilize. Right so they really focus on this area right here. And then they sort of like put some here and then they just left uh, the rest of it. It seemed like it was not necessary. It's the sand. They planted various desert resistant tree and shrub species in yeah. the cells. As a result, they don't die from the restless desert sands of Tengger, but thrive, turning the area around the railway green. The effectiveness of the solution was recognized all over the country. In 1988, the sand protection system on the desert section of the Baotu Lanzhou Railway was awarded the special prize for national science and technology progress. In 1994, the local Zongwei Sand Fixation Forest Farm was included in the Global 500 list and was called Damn, a miracle hey. in the history of human sand control. Straw checkerboards were not only awarded, but also respected through borrowing the idea. Many countries suffering from desert issues began doing the same on their land. Moreover, straw in the sand became the first such Chinese solution used all over the world. By the way, there's not just one way through this desert, Tengger. Yeah, China doesn't think lifeless sandy areas should be avoided. 
So in 2022, they opened the country's first high-speed highway through Tengar. Actually, it's not a separate road that was built just in the desert. It's part of a major highway connecting Qingtongxia and wow. Zhongwei. But does that diminish the heroism? Again, it's, it's just that the Chinese the willingness to just take the risk. Of Chinese builders? Creating nearly 76 miles of road through a hot desert with lots of sandstorms isn't easy. And of course, this is not just a road, but a system with multiple layers of protection against being swallowed by the desert. So our protection system was created to save the road from being washed away by wind and sand. It includes a gravel belt, something similar to straw cells but sturdier and with stone inside. This prevents the sand from harming the highway in any way. And what else do you think we can find here? Yes, straw cells again. In the 2020s, this technology is definitely being used in construction in desert areas. We think this is definitely a sign of quality and a measure of efficiency. The method of setting up straw barriers is basically no different from what's done in regular conditions. Workers lay out the straw, then take a shovel and drive it into the sand. No machines, the solution works just fine this mm. way. It's noted that the project helped save around 141 million cubic feet of building materials, 158 million gallons of water, and also became an eco-friendly solution. The Chinese have also taken care of tourism along the section of the road that runs through the desert. Two service areas have been created so that drivers and their passengers can enjoy the views. The important thing is that the road will definitely last a long time because of the straw. It's been protecting the nearby railway from the desert for over 50 years, so there's no doubt it'll protect the road for cars as well. Plus, straw is saving many other roads that pass through China's deserts. Yeah, the country definitely isn't afraid of lifeless territories, even the most dangerous ones. For example, there's a highway through the Taklamakan no, Desert, 80% of which... See, in that, and again, this is, this is going to really help in the future, especially for countries in the Middle East, where they need to do a lot of this. Runs through an area that's rightfully called the it's Sea of, of Death. The total length anything. of the highway is 349 miles, and a large part of it needs to be protected from the dangerous desert. This is done in particular with straw oh. cells and plants planted inside them. In reality, of course, it's not just about straw, but also about how much China has developed overall and adapted wow. to deal with areas that are better avoided. The Chinese actually have a lot of projects aimed at fighting desertification, but we'll talk about them some other time. Wow, that's very good. Very good. Very good. What the hell is this? Very good. I, I like I like the idea. I like this idea. This is crazy. Some of these inventions are even real. You would never think that China will be just doing stuff like this. So at first they were doing it with rabbits, and now they're doing it with plants. That is interesting. So why if this one was working? Why they went with rabbits? Maybe because they wanted to do it differently. Huh. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you on the next one.